Why, why, why do we need to know about eugenics in social Darwinism? Because it's dominated the last 125 years. This war in the Ukraine is a perfect example of social Darwinism. If you go online on YouTube and you listen to the Ukrainians talk about the Russians, they talk about the Russians in kind of subhuman tones. You can't trust them. You can't believe a word they say. They kill women. They kill children. You know, this is kind of classic racist thinking. The Russians can't be trusted. Well, guess what? Spend some time on YouTube and you'll find, I didn't, you know, I didn't put this on because I don't want to get clipped out of YouTube. But you can actually go there and find Ukrainian soldiers shooting Russian prisoners. I saw it with my own two eyes. Hurry, it'll probably be taken down soon. There's actually clips up on YouTube right now today of Ukrainian soldiers shooting Russians that are laying on their stomachs with their hands behind their heads. So, you know, <clears throat> this kind of war is very brutal, and both sides think the other side is subhuman. Because if you're going to kill someone like this, it's kind of hard to think of him as a brother. you got to think of him as an animal. And that's what military training is all about, how to objectify the enemy as a subhuman. It's social Darwinism taken out onto the street in praxis, and let's see who wins. And that's what we're doing here. We've got a war where the West, through its proxy, the Western Ukrainians, is fighting the Russians in a battle for survival to see who is the fittest. Oh, isn't that special? What a bunch of assholes. Did you see what was left of that town? It was a ghost land. It was a wasteland. There's no one left there in Bakhmut. 70,000 people yesterday. Today, it's just a burned out, destroyed area. 65,000 people are either dead or they evacuated. Their lives are ruined. Oh, that's so nice of us. That's so well-being. We care so much about the well-being of the people. And when I say the people, I mean the human family. Somebody at the top who's sitting in a warm kitchen this morning having his crumpets and tea with servants is saying, yeah, send some more Ukrainians out there to die. They're so brave. The brave Ukrainian people. This really pisses me off. You know what I think? I think if we really want to fight, I think all the guys my age should fight and all the young people should stay home and watch on television. If you had to be 55 years or older to fight in a war and everybody else was out of it, there'd be no more wars. Old people, fathers, sacrifice the lives of their sons. Really nice. This social Darwinism is so deep. Yes, my son. Go kill for me. No, I don't want that. And all we have to do is focus on the well-being of our people to know that this is ri ridiculous. And as we reclaim our will, our desire to live well, to live well, and we enter the political process, these people that are so willing to sit in their kitchens having their tea and crumpets and sending other young men to die we're just, they're going to become irrelevant. We're going to understand that human culture is ours and not theirs. Because we were given material pursuits and relative peace and prosperity, we've lost control. We, the American people, have lost control and insight into how our culture is working. We have given control to a group of people who are Darwinists. And they believe that if their survival is all that matters, not mine, not yours, they don't care about us. In fact, if we die, it proves to them that they were right because they're insane. They're totally insane. They're missing, as Bob Marley's saying, half the story has never been told.